Testing. There, there it is. Apologize for everybody. Have a good morning. Good morning. And good morning to those that are visiting us today. Visit, um, thank you um, for visiting us online as well. Brother Beeman, my father, Larissa so, he used to always tell us, nothing feel but a try. Yeah. Last week, I asked the brothers uh, in the back back there about the uh, file cabinet. Everybody need a file, that I need a file cabinet. And uh, Brother Richie had a file cabinet at his house. So I went out to the estate, uh, I think it was mo maybe Monday or Tuesday. And uh, Brother Richie hadn't made it home yet, so, so some minor was there. And uh, we went and got the um, file cabinet, big old file cabinet. Went to put it in the truck. I said, hold up, Sister Minor. She went, on that, went under that file, file cabinet and lifted it up. She almost pushed the back seat out. So, <laughs> Brother Jimmy, Brother Woods, Brother Brother Richie, better tread lightly out there. <laughs> if you will, open your Bibles and uh, turn them to Psalm 115. Psalm 115. We'll read verses 1 through 18. Psalm 115, verses 1 through 18. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and no secrets hid, the Lord. The Lord, we thank you for this morning, the Lord. The Lord, we thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning to come out and worship you, the Lord. And I pray that we can worship you in spirit and in truth, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask that you Continue to bless us. Bless us when we come in. Bless us when we go out, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless our church, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our city and our country. Heavenly Father, we need you, and we need you greatly, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with those that are first responders, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with the nurses and doctors, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, for some of those individuals are true heroes to us at this time in our, in our generation. Heavenly Father, we ask that you cover us with your anointing, your glory, and your tangible presence this morning, dear Lord. Fill us to your old flow and favor, your compassion, love, and wisdom, and understanding at this time. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with our children, Heavenly Father, as they enter into life, enter into this world, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with um, our our relatives, Heavenly Father, as they go out, Heavenly Father, throughout the city, throughout this country, the Lord, be with them, be with all of us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, be with this congregation and all the families. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with Brother Dave, Heavenly Father, and our Brother Dennis as they preach week in and week out, the Lord, so that we can understand your word, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, that we can become better people, better Christians, dear Lord. The Lord, we, we thank you for your word this morning, the Lord, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and light to our pathway. And dear Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for any transgressions that we have committed in this body, and these bodies, Heavenly Father, make us strong where we're weak, build us up on every lean inside. In Christ's name we do pray to the Lord, amen. amen. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and faithfulness. Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. Thy, they have mouths, but cannot speak, eyes, but they cannot see. They have hands, but cannot feel, feet, but they cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats.
O house of Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to silence, number 18 altogether. It is he who extolled the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless the ears and doers of the holy divine word. Listen to this hymn number 120. 120. All right, rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered, not his blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then and him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking One oh nine, one oh nine. Beautiful gleaning bring. One oh nine. Beautiful gleaning bring. Have it, let us sing. Going early morning into the harvest wide. Sing a song of gladness, labor with all your might. Let the word of Jesus over the nation ring. With the coming evening, beautiful gleaning bring. See you there, the beautiful harvest wife. Go ye there and labor with all your might. Let them there, you and the gladness ring. Go ye now and beautiful gleaning bring. Father, then weary, carry a smile of cheer. With the sad and dreary, weeping and anxious tear.
to the hearts that aching on a load of care. Lend a hand of comfort covers its ailing there. See you there, the beautiful harvest white. Go ye there and labor for your mind. Let them there you and the man is ring. Go ye now and beautiful leaning green. Verse 3. In the name of Jesus, tell the chief today, read the precious promise, wages you will pay. Go with great rejoicing, gleaning from fears of sin. Thrust the glowing sickle, bringing the harvest in. See you there, the beautiful harvest wife. Go ye there and labor with all your mind. Let them there you and the gladness ring. Go ye now and beautiful leaning bring. Good morning. <clears throat> the scripture this morning comes from Psalms, in chapters 130, Psalms 139. I read verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> That's Psalms 139, 1 through 6. And reads as follow. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before, and you laid your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high, I cannot attain it. May Lord have blessed you reading this word. Amen. Good morning. morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Our most righteous and heavenly and holy Father. We come this morning to thank you in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, for the many blessings that you have blessed us with over the weeks. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, that this day will be a blessed and holy day for each and every one of us. Yes. Pray that we'll give you the honor and glory, Lord, because without you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there will be no us. Mm -hmm. So we are thanking you for your mercy. We are thanking you for your grace, for guiding us through these very troublesome times that we are going through, because we know not what tomorrow may bring. But Lord, you have all power and all glory and authority in your hand. We have given your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the authority to execute whatever his desire is. But we pray, merciful Father, that you have mercy on us, Lord, and give us the courage and strength, Lord. For we have your word that you have blessed us with. We have no excuses to go through life blindly misleading and misguiding one another. So we thank you for the living word, Lord, that we could live by and we could uh, be obedient to it. Without the obedience, the patience, the worry will fall on their ears because we go about doing what we want to do and how we want to do it. And we say we are having a good time. But Lord, I pray that we will allow ourselves to get caught up in the good times because the times is 
running short, and we don't know when the day will come. So many now are falling by the wayside without your grace and without your mercy, without your word in their heart, Lord. There's nothing we can do for them, but we can pray and try to help those who are still among us. Try to guide them back to you, Lord, from a long journey that they are taking. Satan is so powerful. He is so strong. But sometimes we try to fight against him. We ought to be like Job. We stand steadfast and knowing that the Lord is on our side. Amen. And no matter what, we will not give up. Amen. We will hold on to God unchanging hand because he is the one yes. that has prepared a place for us yes. that we will go and have peace. Amen. No more crying. No more weeping. No more suffering. No more pain, no more worrying about the chaos of this world because we will have gone and left this world. But Father, we pray for the sick and children this morning. We pray your comfort, bless them this morning. Pray for those who wasn't able to sleep that well last night due to illness or some difficulties that they may have. Might be trouble about something that's going on with their family members. But, Lord, we know that you know all about them. Sometimes we take the burden of the world on our own shoulders, but we must trust and put it in your hands, God, knowing that you'll work it out for us. Amen. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We praise you, Lord, and thank you for this congregation. Yes. We pray for the churches, wherever they might be, Church of Christ throughout this world. Continue to guide us and lead us, Lord, and that we will follow. It is in Jesus Christ's name I pray for everyone this day. Amen. 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 Our next lesson will be one eleven. 111. We all got it, let us sing. Yield not to temptation, for yielding in sin, ye victory will have you. Some loves to win, fight manfully onward, our passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. Why don't you ask? The Savior to have you come for strength and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Some evil companion bad language disdain God name holy reverend no take it in vain be thoughtful and on it kind holy and true look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. Why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Come for strength and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through to him that overcome it. God give us a crown. 
Imitation on him will be 613. 613 is our invitation on him. And this time, let us notice uh, hymn number 459. Good to see everybody this morning. And those of you who are joining us on virtual, good to have you. Welcome to the East Montgomery Church of Christ. 459. I'm in the way, the bright and shiny way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus said today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Oh, I'm in the glory land, glory land way, and heaven is nearer, and the way grow is clearer, for I'm in the glory land, glory land way, and this to the call, the gospel call today, and get in the glory land, glory land way, oh, wonders come home, Oh, hasten to obey, for I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Oh, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. And now heaven is nearer, and the grove was clearer, for I'm in the glory land. Glory land we uh, onward I go, rejoicing in his love. Oh, I'm in the glory land, glory land we Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land, glory land we I'm in the glory land, glory land we Oh, I'm in the glory land, glory land we And the heaven is nearer and the way grow was clearer For I'm in the glory land Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We want to thank all of you who have come out this morning to share in our worship service. And now we just need you to invite a friend. So we want everybody to have an opportunity to hear a message from the word of God so they can make up their own mind as to whether they believe that there's a heaven or not and there's a hell or not 
I don't know about you, but I'm totally convinced. A few weeks ago, Brother Rapisod was teaching from John 14, one and follow. And while he was teaching, it made me think about a sermon I did a long time ago entitled, Heaven is a Prepared Place for a Prepared People. I'm pretty sure it changes every time I do it. So if you heard it before, you'll hear it again, but not quite the same. Amen. And I thought to myself that it would be a good time to remind our members of this. So if you would go with me into John chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. The Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled. Amen. Lord have mercy, there are a lot of things in this life that can trouble you. Yes. I think Jesus knew that when he said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Even though he had just foretold his death and everybody had, uh, had gotten uh, 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 sad about uh, the fact that he would be betrayed and, and he would die on Calvary's cross. But he comforted them. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house. Well, we can stop right there, can't we? In my father's house are many rooms. King James says there are many mansions. And I'll tell you why I think the King James said that in a minute. But he says, if it were not so, if it was not true, I told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will return. And will take you or receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Oh, but we, we, now we, we didn't say the mouthful right here. But you know what? I, I wrote this out. Y'all know why I write this? Because I have a tendency to chase rabbits. And if I don't write it down and just stick to the strip, I mean, two hours ain't nothing for me to preach. A couple of hours up here. I mean, if I get lost up in my lesson, uh, two hours ain't nothing. But I know we got to take medication. <laughs> so you got to eat something before you take your medication. <laughs> So that's why I write it out, and I try to stick to it. <laughs> In my father's house are many rooms. King James Version says many mansions. I suppose the translator used the word mansion because when you talk about God's house, right. one room in God's house can be the size of Pluto. Right. You know Pluto, that long-distant planet. You see, God, uh, heaven is my throne. Earth ain't nothing but a what? Footstool. And God says that he's going to go and prepare a mansion. Ain't no telling how big the rooms are. You know, the person who went to prepare a place for us is the same one that prepared a dwelling here on earth for us. And that is, he's the one that, that made the earth, the sun, the moon, the star, the galaxies. They are all his handiwork. So what he is capable of doing to our surprise and enjoyment is no question so far as the adequacy of the room that he's talking about. The Bible says that 
heaven, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. Proverbs 19 and verse 1. I stopped by this morning to let you know that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And I want to help you to become prepared for this place. And we can take human examples to make our point. In the book of Daniel, there was a king, Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 to, through 6. There was a king, and we're taking an earthly example here. The Bible says in this king's name was Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible reads in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hands, into his hands, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, of the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure, in the treasure house of his God, that is, Nebuchadnezzar did. And the king spake to Aspenaz the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seeds, and that is the, 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 uh, the kings of Judah seeds, the children of Israel, to bring some of those children into the presence of King Nebuchadnezzar, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace in whom they might teach the learning and the tongues of the Chaldean. And the king appointed them daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So he, uh, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. And the chief of the unit gave them names. Daniel he called Belshazzar, Belteshazzar. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishael he called Meshach. And Azariah he called Abednego. Notice that the king's servant looked for men with aptitude who were able to be taught the ways of the Chaldean. These were, uh, and, and these young men were prepared before they came into the presence of the, now this is an earthly king. This is an earthly king, and they had to be prepared before they stand. You see, sometimes you go, you take a, you take a man who, who, who don't uh, 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 know anything about uh, etiquette. And you take a man who go before the king in this day and time and say whatever he feels like. And the king says off with his head. So you have to be prepared. Even back in that day and time, you had to be, you had to know, you had to know and understand certain things before you went before the king. Esther is an example. You see, Esther understood. When Mordecai told Esther to go and 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 and, and, and beg the king for our lives, Esther said, You're crazy. You know the rules. Even though I'm queen, I can't go before the king unless he summons me. And if I went before the king without being summoned, he could have my head. Mordecai said, don't think you're going to escape now. You know what Esther said? Y'all have a three-day fast and pray. And I'm going to do this thing. And if I die, I die. But my point is, you couldn't just go before the king. And this is an earthly king. I stopped by this morning to let you know that in order for you to go before God, you're going to have to be prepared. The first thing that God wants to see 
if you go before him or if you come, he first thing God got to see is the blood of his son on you. That means you have to be, you got to go down in the water. Somebody said, well, I believe, but I, ain't, I haven't gone down in. Oh, don't you go before God without going down in this water. I don't care what you believe. Because this is what washes away your sins. In it is the blood of Christ. He said, I don't believe the blood of Christ. And you know that cup we drink? And the, blood of, the Bible says that's the blood of Christ. Now, if you can believe that it represents the blood of Christ, why can't you believe that the blood is represented in the that's what he, if he said it, that settles it. See, these, these young men had to be prepared, and, 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 and everybody knew the, the customs and, and, and everything about the king, so they got to work. And they started preparing these young men to, 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 to come into the presence of the king. Well, now. God is trying to teach us the ways of heaven. It is very important that we have the aptitude to learn what it means to be holy before we come into the presence of a holy God. To learn what it means to live by faith. See, we can play church all day long. We can, we can pretend church. We can play church. We can fake church. You know how some people, they love to fake it till they make it? But you see, that won't get you there. See, when or if you get to heaven, you will look around. There are certain things you're going to be amazed about. That's why you have to start thinking about heavenly things and not earthly things if heaven is your destination. You see, you get to heaven and you look around and you say, what are the hospitals? There ain't no hospitals in heaven. You look around and you say, well, you know, where, where, where is the, the happening? Where is the Atlanta? You know, the red light district. You're going to look around in heaven for the ABC store. There ain't no, there ain't no ABC store in heaven. And there's no nightclub, evening or morning club. See, we know all about earth because we've been here. But how much do you know about my father's house? What's going to be there? How is it going? How is, is it going to be? Have you ever thought about what that will look like? What that will be like? None of the things that pertains to the flesh will be there because God is going to wipe away all tears. You know, tears is a fleshly thing, like marriage. You know, marriage is a fleshly thing and everything that goes with marriage, right? Okay. That's an earthly thing. When the Bible talks about wiping away all tears, there'll be no, there'll be no, no earthly glands in your eyes so that you can cry. There are certain things that, 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 that God is going to do away with that, that, that's not in heaven. So we need to start being heavenly minded if heaven is our destination. We need to start thinking about heavenly things. Do you? Jesus said, that's why Jesus said in heaven, they neither marry nor are they given in marriage, but are like the angels which are in heaven. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. If you haven't learned how to be holy, you won't be allowed up there. You can't enter. Now, you can enter the church. You can enter the church and, and you can even feel uh, like part of the family. But if you don't work hard to prepare yourself for heaven, it only gives you a false sense of security. I'm among God's people. I hear the word. I have the faith. But if you don't live the life, 
I don't know how you're going to take this message, but I hope and pray that you take it to heart. And I hope you, you understand what I'm saying when I say that heaven is a... Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. It's a prepared place because Jesus said, I'm going to prepare it. But what you may have missed is that it's for a prepared people. Let's move on. You remember the parable about the wedding feast? You remember, well, I, I, I got some young people up in here. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. I, I remember now that, you know, when I was at work and I was talking to young people about the Bible, they didn't have a clue. I mean, things that you learn in preschool. You see, mom and daddy don't read the Bible anymore to their children. Mom and dad don't teach their children Bible anymore because they don't know Bible themselves. So if this generation knows no Bible, Lord have mercy for the next one, right? Matthew's chapter 1. Matthew's chapter 22, verse 1. Jesus uh, spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And sent servants out to call those who were uh, invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. The ox and the fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention. Went off one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the servant, treated them shamefully and killed them. King was angry sent his troops to destroy those murderers and burn that city. Then he said to his servant, the wedding feast is ready. But those invited were not worthy. Listen at this now. Those who were invited, they were what? Not worthy. <clears throat> I think that ought to register in your head now. Because in as much as heaven is a prepared place, are you worthy? So I, I stopped by to help you get worthy this morning. You said, you know, God is good. Because if you're not worthy at this particular moment, I'm going to tell you how you can become worthy. Huh? Isn't that wonderful? Well, now. Go, therefore, to the main roads, King James said, highways, and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads to gather all of them uh, whom they found both bad and good. You see, that's why I say, you know, that you, you know, you can enter the you can come into the church. You know, the church can be full of people. Bad and good. But don't get too happy now because that's not the end of it. Watch this thing. So the wedding. Hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in, oh Lord have mercy, to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? He was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, Bind him, hand and foot, cast him into outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Lord, are you going to be part of the few? Are you going to be part of the few? Now, in short, 
The parable was about offering an entrance into the kingdom to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and, and the scribes, or and the, and the Jews in general, who refused to enter. So the king sent his servants to the highways uh, to invite everyone they found. This would not only involve all, uh, all kinds, that is good and bad, but it would, uh, they were among the Jews, but those that were among the Gentiles, those that were Gentiles as well. Note that the scripture do not say uh, they went out to get the Gentiles, but the fact that they went into the highways, uh, brought in good and bad, certainly gives all probability. This is but another parable that Jesus gave. It's a continuing of chapter 21. You see, in ancient times, Somebody said, well, why did, why did the king, why was the king so rough on the individual that didn't have on a wedding garment? After all, he came from the streets. They went out and got people from the streets, good and bad. Maybe he didn't have time to, you see, in ancient time, kings and prince were accustomed to presenting changes of garments, changes of raiments to their friends and, and, and favorites. To refuse to receive it uh, was an expression of the highest contempt. Genesis chapter 45 and 22 gives us uh, a glimpse into those, those customs that were uh, 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 in, in, in that day and time. Genesis uh, 45 and uh, verse 22, Bible reads, to each and all of them he gave a change of clothes, and this is Joseph, but uh, to Benjamin he gave 300 shekels of silver, shackles of silver, shekel, shackles of silver, and five change, changes of clothes. So it was a custom. Look at 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 10, 22. Ten twenty-two, Second Kings, ten verse twenty-two. He said to him, who was in charge of the wardrobe, "Bring out vestments for all the worshippers of Baal." So he brought out the vestment for them. Then Jehu went into the house of Baal, and and when uh, Jehonadad, the son of Rechab. Uh, and he said to the worship of the Baal, search and see that there is no servant of the Lord here among you, but only the worshipers of Baal. So Jehu was plotting a little, Jehu was carrying out a little plot here, but the point to be made is that they had, uh, uh, they kept raiments, garments for their guests, Okay. And right here, you see them having all the worship of Baal. And that, was, that could have been a quite a few people, couldn't it? But they had clothes to give them. They had raiments to give them. Same as, the same was, it was, was in, and the last uh, one is, is uh, Esther 8 and, uh, and, and, and 15, 6 and 8 and 8 and 15. You can read those for yourself. It was expected that such garments would be worn when they came into the presence of the benefactor. So when you went to a, a, a wedding or a feast and, and, and the king or the prince would give you a, a change of garment, it was expected that you would wear that garment. And it was usually white. A long white robe was what they would usually uh, 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 give. Well, this rendered the conduct of this man more inexcusable. He was furnished a change of garment that was uh, uh, it was expected for uh, for him to, to to wear it, but it was it was customary. Okay, so he knew what it was, and he knew what he was to refuse to do. It, it was extremely. Contemptible.
So not wearing the garment was an expression of the highest disrespect for the king. Notice something here. We often say that we can come to God just as we are. But you can't stay just as you are. You see, you have to be renewed. You see, you have to have a change of, of garments, figuratively speaking, if you will. So that guest that came from the highway refused to wear the garment that was provided. So what happened to him? He said, bind him hand and foot and cast him to outer darkness. Notice also that when God provides us with his word, which is his saving grace to us, if we refuse, what do you think will happen to us? You see, when we come to Christ, you know, I say you come to Christ, but, you know, you can come just as you are. But you can't stay as you are. Because when you come to Christ, Christ gives you a garment. And if you refuse to put on that garment, and that garment is nothing, nothing more or nothing less than Christ himself. And I said, what are you talking about? Hey, haven't you ever read Galatians 3.27? For as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put him on. You put on Christ just like you put on a garment. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 20 through 24. But that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Christ. To put off your old self which belong to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit. See, that's how you put on Christ. That's how you, uh, that's how you are renewed. And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self, created, after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. It has Ephesians 4, verse 20 through 24. You see, we put on Christ just like a garment. By when we are renewed in our mind, when we change the way we think and the way we do things to the way uh, God has commanded us to, uh, to do things. So back to Matthew's chapter 22. A few more comments and we'll let you, we'll let you go. Tell you what, I'm going to skip Matthew for now and go back to John 14. There's a few things I wanted to point out, but I'm not going to hold you long. Let's go back to John 14 and we'll, and we'll wrap this, we'll wrap this up. Oh, there's a lot to be said in, in Matthew's, in, in John chapter 14. There's a lot to be said when we make this comparison to the One of the things that we can point out in John 14 is that God had invited the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Jews in general. God had invited them uh, into the kingdom, but they refused. And that's why. We have to be extremely careful when we are dealing with people and when we're judging people and things of that nature. 
Because that was another occasion when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and invited them into the kingdom. And they refused to come. And you know what Jesus said to them? He said in, in, in Matthews 21, 31. Matthews 21, 31. He said, which of, he, he, there was this parable about the two sons, and y'all remember that parable, told the first to go, he said, I go, but didn't, told the second to go, he said, I'm not going to go, but you know. Well, he said, which of the two did the father's will? They said, the first, uh, Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, the tax collectors, these were people that were despised in the eyes of the Jews. I mean, they was the lowest of the low. But Jesus said to these Pharisees, he says, the tax, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, you know how people feel about prostitutes, don't you? You know how people feel, even today, you know how people feel about prostitutes? But listen to what Jesus told them. I say unto you, and when Jesus said, I say unto you, you can take it, you can rest assured that it's true, right? That the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitute believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your mind and believe. Isn't it is something, you know, the people that we talk about and we preach about, we talk about them old drunks, we talk about them old prostitutes, we talk about people. It hey, wouldn't it be funny if they became saved before? Because you know what it deals with? It deals with changing your heart, changing your mind, changing your way of life, and accepting God's way. If they can do it and you can't, guess what? They're going to enter in. So you can play church all you want. You can get people to believe that you're pious all you want. You can get people, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is this. The one who is able and capable, the one who has that aptitude, all right, to change their lives and to live like God required them to live, they are the ones. You say, well, I've been preaching for 50 years. Yeah, how long have you been preaching? If you can't do what God say do, you ain't going to be saved. You say, well, you know, I give to the poor. I'm the, I'm the biggest giver here. Uh, we thank you. That ain't going to save you. I work, I work for the church more than anybody. Oh, we thank you for your service. We really do. I mean, God bless you. I got bad news. That ain't going to save you. You see, what's going to save you is the change of life. When you give up the world, because, see, you know, you can't, you can't go to heaven if it doesn't cost you nothing. It don't have to cost you something. I said, well, I thought it was free. Yeah, technically, it's free. I'm like old David. You know what David said a long time ago when he was asking this man for his property so he can, he can erect an altar to, for God so, so that, that, that he would, he could appease God, and, and God would stop the death angel from, from you know, spreading the disease. All. He said, well, he said, King, I give it to you free. He said, oh, no, no, I'm going to pay you. I refuse to give to God that which costs me nothing. I refuse to offer God something that costs me nothing. Oh, I like that attitude right there. You see, if you want to make it to heaven, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost something that everybody can pay. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, you can still pay it. Isn't that wonderful? So you, 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 you got to give up something. That's what I'm getting at. And you got to give up your old way of life. And you got to accept God's way. And when you do that, prostitutes and, and drunkards ain't going to beat you in. They ain't going to get in before me because I'm going to obey and I'm not going to pretend to obey 
I'm going to obey. You know, sometimes we need to hear things like that because, you know, a lot of times we grow up and everybody else is pretending church and, and, and I know what they do, so I'm going to pretend church too. Well, guess what? You're going to go where they're going. You're going to get what they get. Well, I don't know preachers because I know some preachers that do that. And it doesn't matter who they are. Uh, haven't you heard me tell you time and time again that God is no respecter of person? God is no respecter of person. Well, you know everybody like me. It doesn't matter that everybody likes you. What matters is that you must have a change of heart. You must put on Christ. And see, that's how you put on Christ. That's how you put that garment on. That's how you wear Christ. Having a change of heart, having a change of mind, and living your life the way the Lord commands you to. That's how you put him on. So I hope we're clear with that. That's how you put on Christ. That's how you wear him like a robe. And let me tell you, the last thing I want to tell you is this right here. How many last time that is? Three. So that... <laughs> You can't put them on. When you go to work, pull them off. Can't put them on. When you see your friends, pull them off. No, no, no. This garment here, when you put it on, this garment doesn't come off. It stays on. It stays on. Can't pull it off and on. The lesson is yours. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, and you haven't realized that, you know, I've heard all my life that, 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 that Jesus was going to prepare a place for me. And I, every time I hear it, I say amen. But I never thought that it was for a prepared people. Well, I stopped by this morning to let you know. Heaven is for a people who have prepared themselves to live in the presence of a holy God. See, anybody can't go in the presence of God. You have to be prepared. Just like those boys were prepared to enter the, the presence of Nebuchadnezzar, they were prepared. Three years they were prepared. You have to prepare to meet your God. You can't go to him and you can't go before him any kind of way. Your sins must be washed. You need to know who he is. You need to have the proper etiquette. You need to know that when you go in the presence of God, you bow down. And some people think that when they go to, before God, they're going to argue with him. Oh, no, 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 no. That's why you need to prepare yourself to go and to be in the presence of God. He's a holy God. Prepare yourself. We're going to sing a verse of a song, or so however long Jimmy want to sing, and we're going to ask you to come. We're going to ask you to come. Why don't you come? Let's together we stand. This time we are set aside to uh, partake of the Lord's Supper. And we find in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, start at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that uh, which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had supper, saying thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this and remember yourself of me. Let us give thanks and prayer. Our most gracious and precious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we set aside to 
remember you and taking up this bread and this wine. We pray, Lord, that we will take with clean hands and pure heart. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. After the same manner, he also took the cup. When he had supper, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it and remember of me. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord death till he come. Wherefore, to a man example himself, he that eat it and drink it of this blood unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Father, we thank you for this cup, for the shedding of your blood that we often do in remembrance of you and the sacrifice that you made for us. It is in Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Okay, well, I can't say we want to thank Brother Ellis for that remembrance again. So. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, we have a few uh, few announcements. Uh, first of all, um, we want to 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 make sure everybody uh, everybody is aware of the um, uh, information put out about FEMA. And, and, uh, and that is for anyone who um, uh, paid for a funeral, you know, out of their pockets, that's COVID related. FEMA is reimbursing up to four, up to seven thousand uh, dollars for COVID nineteen funerals. Anyone who uh, know who paid for the funeral of a loved one in 2020. Please gather funeral documentations to file for their reimbursement. More information is available by searching the link below. COVID funeral assistance, one FEMA.gov, FEMA.gov. Okay, so you can find inf more information on that, about that online. So anyone who, uh, who paid out of pocket for a funeral that was related to the COVID can be, can get reimbursed, reimbursed. On our prayer list, <coughs> we want to um, continue to pray for Sister Mary Johnson, okay? Uh, she's undergoing uh, treatment for thyroid. Continue to pray for Sister Vicki Thomas, okay? So she's taking care of her husband who had surgery. Continue to pray for Sister Belinda uh, Vaughn. Okay. Um, with the she's dealing with the lingering effects of the of the COVID. I want to pray especially for those who who are tasked. You know, we've taken care of a loved one. 
I mean, you just don't know how blessed you go <laughs> you're going to be because that's no small matter. You know, whether it's people uh, you're taking care of your your age, parents, grandparents, or you're taking care of someone that has a, a disability or, or, or whatever the case may be. You know, I'm, you know, my heart goes out for for people who who are caretakers or for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes it's um, you talk about a sacrifice, you know, but so our prayer goes out for them. And lastly, we, we have a, a certificate of appreciation. Of course, uh, Javen and Nick Nicholas is not here, but I want to present, all right, I'm going to read this certificate. This is to Javen Rappasad and Nicholas Palmer. Certificate of uh, uh, appreciation awarded to Brother Javen Rappasad with sincere thanks for your tireless effort and valuable role in the facilitation of our weekly uh, webcast of our Sunday service uh, to make for uh, the continued edification of Church of Christ our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, East Montgomery Church of Christ. Amen. Uh, so that's two. Oh, well, y'all see that. Amen. And so the, the same is read in about uh, Brother Nick, Nicholas Palmer, okay? Amen. So they're not here, but um, we will present those to them. At the other side. Are there any other announcements or, or comments? Anything else from the floor? All right, nothing else. We got a final selection. Yeah. All right, we're gonna. Uh, uh, after that, we going to ask brother, brother Woods. As a matter of fact, brother Woods, you make your way up here, and uh, while he sing that song, then we. Father, that we get ready to dismiss it, oh Father, and go out each one of the direction, oh Father. We just want to remember what Brother Ezra has said the morning his service, oh Father. Oh Father, you know we ain't got no reason to not to do, oh Father. You know we got control of where, where we go, oh Father, and what we do, oh Father. So just continue to put your faith in you and let us do what right and treat people like we want to be treated, oh Father. And everything be all right, oh Father. So just give us strength to make do another day, oh Father. And continue guide us until we can meet back here at a point of time, oh Father. Yes. Oh Father, just remember we all have the same amount of time in the end of the day, oh Father, that we can do, oh Father, yes. what we need to do, oh Father. So in your son's name, amen. Amen. amen.